right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am joined by Christian Chrome, who is in the Netherlands. How are you doing, Christian? Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And Christian is the author of the book, uh, Humanification, Go Digital, Stay Human, How Technology Will Advance Humanity Towards a More Meaningful Future. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, but in your book, uh, Christian, maybe give the background story about how this started, how you got into all of this through the terminal diagnosis um, of your daughter. Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, I have a background in technology, so I was an entrepreneur for, for uh, two decades. And then uh, my daughter became very ill. She was born, and after three months, we discovered she had some uh, yeah, severe health problems. So we went to hospital, and um, they told us that she uh, will not, would not survive it. And um, so there started my own quest for, for health, and to, to, yeah, we started to look for a, a cure to save her daughter's life. And during that quest, I found some parallels, some interesting parallels between how cells use biology in organisms and how human beings use technology in organizations. And finally, uh, it led to a, a cure that saved our daughter's lives. Today, she's almost 10 years old. She's doing great. Uh, she has a wonderful life. Um, but it also gave me some other insights, uh, insights how cells in our body solve complex problems. And um, what I found out is that human beings are going to the exactly the same evolutionary stages as, as living cells. So we can learn a lot from these cells. And that's why I started a, a career as a, as a futurist, as a keynote speaker, uh, to inspire people uh, to learn them more about how cells solve problems and how we can structure our society in the near future. So it's basically a short background. Absolutely. Um, okay, so first of all, you've got some your first, the first chapter of your book talks about our part one is the principles of human humanification. So what do you mean by humanification? Well, humanification is, is um, it's about uh, creating technology that is more aligned with, with the nature, with, with, with our human being. Um, today, we see the technology as a cold external device. It's, it's um, something separate from, from, our, from our body. What I believe is that uh, just like in biology, that technology will eventually become um, uh, invisible and that it can help human beings to uh, expand their creativity, uh, augment their uh, effective, uh, eff how do you say that? Uh, to augment their creativity and uh, boost their productivity, effectivity. So technology is basically helping us to become more human. And that's what I call the process of becoming uh, yeah, humanification, becoming more human. So it's and, taking over more and more of our basic needs so that we can focus on higher needs. And uh, that's where um, the process of becoming more human is uh, initiated. Yeah, and, and one of the challenges there obviously is that when, when, uh, is when technology is being created is unfortunately oftentimes the human impacts of it aren't really known in advance. I mean, say, I would say, say social media is probably a classic example of the actual impact on humanity uh, is probably well beyond anything ever envisioned by the, the technology uh, creators in the first place. So how do you, when you are creating technology, how do you assess the human impact? Well, what, what we today see today is that the technology is used uh, mostly by the ego. So people want to use technology to earn money, uh, to, to, to dominate, to, to have control over people. And that's why we see um, social media as it is today. It's, it's, it's using people instead of that people are using tech, uh, social media. Um, so I think um, we need to create a new kind of platforms that are in line with uh, the, the incentives that we have as human beings. Uh, it should help us to unite and to empower human beings. And I think social media today is doing the opposite. It's dividing mm. people and it's enslaving people. So I think we have to create platforms that are not owned by a few rich people, which are, um, uh, yeah, controlling the system, but it should be owned by the community, by, by the people. And I think that's what, yeah, currently happening in the Netherlands, for example, they're building new kind of platforms, which are like a bottom-up revolution, which are mm -hmm. owned by the people. And I think if we can build these kind of platforms, then they will empower human beings and unite human beings into one big system. 
Yeah, no, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't agree more. Um, and you say, uh, part of it you say, you have to completely, or you have to continually disrupt, right? I mean, disruption and, and technological disruption and, and process disruption and all of that. Um, I mean, I guess uh, people are always looking for kind of uh, static, right? They're always looking for, okay, you know, great, we've innovated now, let's sort of sit back and, 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 and uh, reap the benefits of it. But the reality is nowadays you have to continue to you have to continue to innovate and continue to evolve, and there isn't any option to kind of sit around and even enjoy the fruits of your labor anymore, really. Yeah, sure. And in, in the early days, uh, the last few decades, uh, you could innovate, and that's, that was enough. But today, you need to reinvent yourself every day, and uh, you need to disrupt yourself every day. Um, and there will be a new breed of organizations uh, in, in the sixth wave, which is all about artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And the DNA of these organizations is all about learning. So they will, they will learn uh, by default. And that's, I think, uh, a big comparison between uh, the traditional organizations that we have today. And for those organizations, it's very hard to learn and to adapt themselves. So I really believe that we are moving towards more swarm-like organizations, which are fluid, which are able to mm -hmm. adjust and adapt to the circumstances in real time. And uh, new technologies like blockchain and AI are enabling us to do so. So I think that we will see a new breed of uh, organizations very soon, which will compete with the traditional organizations. And uh, I think it will be an unfair match. Yeah, um, and that will require people to be very flexible, right? And uh, and a lot of, you know, traditionally, a lot of people, you know, they love their job descriptions, they love demarcation, they love to be able to come in and say, okay, this is what I do, and this is the part that I do, and all of that. And what you're talking about is going to require flexibility in people as well, and the ability to 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 move quickly and to pivot and to change and to to continually kind of absorb new as you said new learnings new technologies so it's going to require a completely different type of person almost a, a different type of approach to work absolutely absolutely uh, when technology like ai and robotics uh will automate many of our hard skills we have to focus on the soft human skills like emotional intelligence and all these things uh, creativity um uh, so all these soft human skills, I think those are the uh, skills of the future economy. So it's a completely different profile than we see today in our static uh, hierarchical organizations, which are pyramid-like. And these swarm-like organizations demand a lot more from our, uh, our human side, our soft side, communication, uh, empathy, compassion, all these things. So uh, yes, I think that we need to um, uh, re-educate ourselves uh, into completely different directions. So we have to focus ourselves on the parts which the machines cannot do. The machines are very well, very good at hard skills, automated, mm -hmm. each target. So we have to focus on the soft skills. So I think for a lot of people it should be, um, yeah, we need to re reinvent ourselves in that way as well. Yeah, because I mean, let's face it, that's, as you said, that's not the traditional, maybe the traditional skills that are needed in, in the workplace. Uh, as much as they will be in the future. So how then do you, how do people then evolve to be able to be use more emotional intelligence and more of the soft skills? Because um, oftentimes those are not the things that are celebrated. Um, it's more of the hard skills that are celebrated um, within organizations. So from what you're saying, there's going to have to be an evolution there and also an evolution at the leadership level in, in, what, in what's expected of people and how people and the, and the skills that are celebrated. Yeah, sure. But I think when, when technology is able to digitize and automate hard skills, then they will become cheaper and they will eventually become a commodity. And when things become a commodity, they're not special anymore. Uh, so, and the things that cannot be digitized, which are, I think, more the soft human skills, um, those are the, the skills that will raise in or increase in value. So I think there will be a revolution in this area where we will see a shift um, where people are more proud of their social skills, their emotional uh, intelligence skills, than um, previously they were on their hard skills. So I, th I think there will there will be a shift there in the next few years, and you already see it right now. Um, uh, during the COVID crisis, everyone is working from home. We have to go digital, and now the human part is even more important. How do you connect with people over a longer distance? How do you connect with people uh, via Zoom? So um, I think the shift is already happening. 
No, I, I, I would agree, absolutely. And, uh, and I think people have discovered actually that uh, even from virtual, you can actually create uh, very strong relationships, sometimes even better, to be honest, and you know, people can sit in an office together for years and never know much about each other. Um, so where would you say we are in, I mean, people are feeling in some ways overwhelmed by the pace of technological change and everything that's coming, but where are we in terms of this revolution, do you think, and how fast is this going to come and what kind of change, how much change do you think we're going to be faced with in the coming years? Oh, I really think that we are facing a tsunami, a tidal wave of change, a tidal wave of digitization automation, which is coming at us really fast. Um, my model is about the seven waves, and we are now entering mm -hmm. the sixth wave. And each wave is exponentially uh, more impactful than the previous wave. So in the last 20 years, we have seen the internet and e-commerce and, and smartphones and, and uh, applications. And now uh, we will see the double amount of change in only 10 years uh, by using artificial intelligence. But what I see is that um, new waves are making it easier for a lot of people to access technology. Uh, with AI, we can create uh, conversational uh, interfaces, so we can have a dialogue with a computer. So if you can speak, uh, you will be able to uh, interact with the, the, the most advanced technology and information in the world. And finally, the seventh wave is all about holographic technology. And when things become visual, then uh, yeah, for everyone, uh, it beco it's becoming accessible. So I think that technology becomes more powerful and in becoming more powerful, it adapts um, to us instead of we adapt to technology. Uh, if you look at the last 20, 30 years, we have to learn programming languages. We have to do trainings for uh, a specific kind of software. Uh, but now AI is uh, enabling us to, to talk to a computer. And I think that's a, a massive change. Um, so I believe that, that a lot of more people will be involved in this digital revolution, which is happening right now because the interface is becoming more human. And so how would you advise people if somebody's listening to this and they're thinking, wow, that sounds like I'm going to be out of a job soon and the automation and you know, digitization is going to take out over everything. Um, what would you say to people who are looking to their roles in the future? What should they be focused on? How should they be making sure that they are in the best position possible to take advantage of this as opposed to be a, a, you know, a casualty of it? Yeah. First of all, I think people should invest in their 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 soft skills. Uh, so um, try to find what's your purpose. Uh, try to be aligned with your purpose. Uh, try to find out what you really like to do in life. And I think that might be a good guidance to towards the direction where where you could go. I believe that in these swarms organizations, everyone is um, aligned with his own purpose, just like the cells in our body. Uh, your heart cells are 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 created to pump blood through your body. Uh, you cannot use them as a brain cell, for example. So I think within our society, we will see specific communities with people who are aligned with their purpose, who are solving specific issues in our, in our society. And I think uh, aligning with your purpose is, is one of the first steps that you can do. Uh, the second step would be uh, invest in, in social skills, um, emotional intelligence, how do you connect with other people? Uh, if you look at a swarm with birds, all these birds are connected with each other. And each bird mm -hmm. is taking um, uh, an account, seven birds in his neighborhood. So I think we should be really good at connecting with other people and stay connected, even if times are uh, bad, like, like we have today in a Corona crisis. So I think that's, that's are the, I think the most two important uh, things that you can focus on, uh, finding your purpose, align with your purpose and uh, focus in, on your soft skills, on your soft human skills. Yeah, and I think that's one. I think you touched on something there that I think is really critical that uh, um, a lot of people don't do, and that is actually figure out what your purpose is and and why you're doing what you're doing and and what you what you're really passionate about. And I think if anything, this this pandemic crisis hopefully has given people the breathing space to look at what they're doing. Maybe they've been forced to look at it through circumstances, but I think figuring out your, your purpose. And I think sometimes when people hear that phrase about figuring out your purpose, they think it's a very extremely esoteric exercise or whatever, but it, it shouldn't be, right? No, I think it's easier than, than, than most people expect. Um, and it, I don't think that purpose is a destination. It's, it's more an alignment, mm -hmm. like a compass. And I believe that eventually everyone is here to create or to express in a creative way, express themselves in a creative way. And the more you are in aligned with that creative expression of who you really are, the more you are aligned with your purpose. So and I think it's a journey that you're on for the rest of your life. You will never find it, but you can get closer to it. So 
um, yeah, I think it's a nice challenge for a lot of people to um, to start a journey. Yeah, to, and embrace the journey um, step by step. Because w- one of the things I think uh, people are always thinking that you have to set these grand goals and everything, and then you're focused so far into the future that you that you lose track of the journey and the ex- and you don't experience or live the journey the way you should. Yeah, I think it's important to live in in the here and the now, in the moment, and and see what comes at you. And um, if you had set two two um, uh, big goals, uh, then, then the journey is not important anymore. But I think you have to enjoy the journey and every step of it. So I think it's a learning process. And uh, on the on the uh, how deeper you go into the journey, the more you learn and the more you will find out about yourself and what your purpose is and what your alignment is with your purpose. So uh, in, in, in finishing, do you, think, uh, do you think people should be excited and embracing the future or should they be nervous about it? Uh, a little bit nervous is okay, I think, but uh, I really think that people should be very excited about the future. I, should, I think people should embrace change, embrace new technologies, uh, because I think in the end, the technology is bringing us together and it's empowering individuals to do what they really like to do, to do their purpose, just like the cells in our body. So eventually, I think we will uh, merge into one big organism, which we call humanity. And technology there is the same as biology in our body. It's, it's all kind of little systems which help the bigger system to, to do what it should do. And I think we are uh, fulfilling the same role within our society. So I think you should be really excited. But I think we have some tough years ahead right now. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and as we have seen in the past, like we have to make sure that the the development and the the spread of technology is done in a way that you know everybody gets a share in as opposed to uh, when it ends up as command and control and all of that uh, and that's some of some of the issues that we're seeing today i think um, as long as you know, like we we keep one eye on the dem- democrat democratization of technology as opposed to the um, you know the maybe the oligarch structures that we have today yeah, I think that's really important. Uh, I think technology should belong to the to the community, to the uh, to the democracy. Mm-hmm. And if it's owned by a few people, then it's not used for the, for the right purposes. So uh, I think we should fight for democratization of technology. And if we can do that, and we can use this technology for the good, then we have a bright future in front of us. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, Christian, this has been fantastic. All of Christian's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Well, my name is Christian Kromer. I'm, a, I'm a, an author of the uh, best-selling book, Humanification, Go Digital, Stay Human. I am a speaker, motivational speaker, inspirational speaker. So uh, until the COVID crisis, I traveled all over the world to give uh, keynote speeches. But since uh, March, I'm doing all of this uh, in a digital way using uh, Zoom and then my home studio here. Uh, so it's a different kind of profession for me, <laughs> but the message mm-hmm. stays the same. And I'm currently also involved in um, uh, the creation of uh, masterclasses, online masterclasses. So we help people to uh, develop a future-proof mindset to see uh, the future in a more uh, holistic perspective and see leadership and technology from a different perspective. So we hope to, yeah, we help, yeah, we hope to help people to um, uh, yeah, help them to find their own path in, in where technology is going, where humanity is going, and to find their own role. So that's basically in a nutshell what I'm doing. Yeah, no, fantastic. And I would absolutely encourage people to to check it out. I think that uh, it's best to educate yourself about where we're going so you can have the best opportunity to take advantage of it as opposed to have it happen to you, actively get involved in it. Uh, Listen, thanks again, Christian. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. (laughs) 